Hey, you're now tuned into the Lady Charmaine Live Show. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And of course, we got another great hot topic show for you today. So if you want to make sure that you guys take the time right now to go ahead and share this to your page so all your other friends can watch it because we've got some juicy stuff we're going to be talking about tonight. So if you want to make sure that all of you guys chime in because we're going to be talking about tonight some taboo topics when it comes to family and actually how we actually become a family. So we're going to be talking about that. Plus, here's some of the hot topics we're going to be talking about tonight. Are the days of big mamas gone? You know, we were talking about this one day and it says, uh, do you think that the family dynamics would be better if we still had big mamas around? And if you got grown kids and they didn't move out of the house, do you take the house key from them? If you do or if you don't, we want to talk about that tonight. And if you have an STD, would you use an STD dating site to meet someone who has the same STD. And for all of you married folks out there, those who are thinking about getting married, just single, and you know, you meet somebody, you want to go to marriage counseling, how long would the person have to be married in order for you to go to counseling with them? Because there is an individual who decided to become a marriage counselor after being married for only five days. We're going to be talking about all that and more coming up with Hot Topics with Lady Charmaine. And this Lady Charmaine live show, this portion of the show is sponsored by Rebuilding Your Dreams After the Storm Women's Conference and is just around the corner. It's going to be held on Saturday, July the 28th. So it's still not too late to get your tickets. All you have to do is go to rebuildingyourdreamsconference.eventbrite.com. Again, go to rebuildingyourdreamsconference.eventbrite.com and get your tickets. If you feel you kind of lost your dream, you lost your way, well, come to this powerful conference and experience three powerful speakers speakers that will be life-changing it will change life so good again go to rebuilding your dreams conference.eventbrite.com and of course i got some wonderful people in the studio with me as usual i, I don't want to say partners in crime <laughs> <laughs> ain't nobody trying to go to jail all right all right <laughs> well we got my husband joe in the building all right hello, also hello. my girl miss marie hutchison hey, and of right. course, we have the only hair hustler. He goes by the name of Mr. Derek Dennis. Hey, y'all. How y'all doing? Doing good. <laughs> really good. Did how I have you a doing? Good, you know what? I'm good. I, a girl just need to get a little bit of rest. And That's I think awesome. once I get some rest, I think I'm going to be straight, though. That's right. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to be real straight, and, right. and God's going to be good to me. Yeah, amen. Well, you know, we've been discussing some uh, great topics coming up that we're going to be talking about on the show. And let me take your name down from here. <laughs> that we're going to be talking about on the show. But if you want to chime in on the show, what I want you guys to do is give us a call at 916-226-9226. You see the number right there on the screen. It's 916-226-9226. And if you ever have a hot topic that you want to share with us, all you have to do is do this. Just go to our Hot Topics page. It's called Hot Topics Real Talk No Chaser and actually share it right there on the page because we want everybody to feel free and join in on the conversation. Conversation. Ain't that good, y'all? All right, that's it. So. Man, that's <laughs> it. That Join on in. Now, how many that's of y'all know that real life situations hit us every single day? Ooh, I mean, just day. real life. So we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about family. We're going to be talking about friends. We're going to be just talking about stuff that people deal with, and it's going to be a lot of those taboo conversations. Like here's one taboo conversation. <laughs> so for everybody that got grown kids out there. They getting grown and they own their own. And this was one. My, my thought ended up changing on this one. And the question is, when your grown kids move out of the house, do you take the house key from them? What do you do when they move out of the house? Derek? No. Why I, not? Because I just think that my baby is always going to have a key. Just Because I just always want her to feel like this is your home. Yes, you know, me and your mother might be having an intimate moment, but you just it, it needs just to be rules there. Like, okay, look, when you don't come in during this time, if you do, you knock, you act like a stranger, okay? Or text me or something. So, But you should always feel free to have this feel like your home. Like, this is your home, and, and why not have a key? Okay. You know? Okay, Marie? Yeah, I'm sitting here thinking about any of my friends that I know, if they have keys to their parents. I don't have no keys. Mama, I ain't got no keys to your house. I just thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a key to her home. 
So I guess the mm. keys get took. I don't know. Wow. <laughs> so I never thought about you just now. I don't have a, my son doesn't have a key to my apartment. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Okay. My in laws even not, have a key to my apartment. It's place. not because mm-hmm. of any reason. I just I don't know why that just didn't happen. Yeah. Interesting okay. people. Interesting. You you want to know what's some what's interesting? My view kind of changed on that first because I've always had a key to my mom's house. My mother always had a key to my house. Mm-hmm. But then I began to think. You know, I, I, would, I would say my kids would always have a key to my house. But then I thought about it. It depends on how that child left the house mm. that would determine if they would have a key to my home. Okay. So that's, that's what changed okay. my thought that's process. Right. How did you leave my house? Yeah. That is a good point. That's a super good point. That is. Because, like, did you leave point. disrespectful? Did you leave stealing? What did you mm-hmm. do? You know what I mean? And, and that's my point. So how did you leave? Yeah. Now, but sometimes you. the parents just may not want their child to have a key, period. That's true. I don't have a key to my parents' house. Mm. Me? And I thought I left all right. No, right. me too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought, I thought good. everything's cool. We, we didn't mission okay. anything. Yeah. I, you know, I left respectfully. I didn't take anything. I didn't right. steal anything. Right. And yeah. I don't have a key. I haven't had a key in years. Yeah. Joe, mama might be in there it, doing something. In fact, <laughs> in fact, my parents not too, not too recently told me, you know, I better call before I come oh, over. Oh, oh. <laughs> Well, boy, <laughs> you know, so I'm like, uh, it's different. So I don't know. It's kind of, kind of weird. I mean, weird. I don't have to call per wow. se before I, but I don't have no key. Yeah, we, uh, I came over a few times. Well, you not, better not, call to make sure she home if you don't have a key. Yeah. <laughs> We got a discussion, Miss Hutchison. <laughs> See, uh, un- unlike Derek's situation where, you know, uh, they, they, they weren't concerned about, like, intimacy and things going on of that sort. They just wanted to know I was coming by for some reason. Just pop up over yeah. here. So they don't want me just popping up, right. you know. <laughs> and now we, we did it a few times, and, uh, you know, we do it not, not late hours or early, you know, somewhere in the mid-afternoon uh, yeah. hours yeah. just to, you know. But, after yeah, they, they, told, they told me that, and I was like, wow, I got a call before I come over? That's cold. Blood. Yeah. Well, how many parents require their kids to call before they come over? Because I know I've had parents actually literally say, we, I have it up on my Facebook page. And people say as long as they call, some people still want their kids to have a safe place to come. But like I said, it really depends on how they left the it house. It depends on how they it's left true. the house. That's but, a good point. Right. Because if you left my house rebellious, so, not li- you know what I'm saying? You're not getting the key. Thank you. You with somebody that we may not necessarily approve of. Not getting you, the key. You're, not, you're not getting the key. Right. And especially if you feel that somebody has an influence over your child and their thought process and their thinking. Yes. And if they don't respect your parents, mm-hmm. you know, yes. you yeah. give me that key. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> you know what? I'm about to agree with you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> right. And let You're me not let me take bring your drama over here. Right, That's right. Part. You're lucky I don't take that coat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that I bought. That I bought. Right, right, <laughs> right. Start repossessing some and stuff. That's bag you're packing your stuff in. All of that. Mine. <laughs> you know, you started all that That's stuff. Why I recycle. Uh Right. Now, I was sent this, and I thought this was really good, and somebody um, added this to our Hot Topics page. It's Hot Topics Real Talk. No chaser, and they sent this. They said, family isn't what it used to be. It used to be a time when you can go to grandma's house to eat, hang out with family, and just have a good time. Now, everybody choose who they want to deal with. Aunts, uncles choose which kids to be proud of. Brothers and sisters treat friends more like family. Cousins talk about each other like they aren't flawed. Grandparents spend time with certain grandkids. And the only time you see everyone is at a funeral. Mm. How true is that statement? You think that's a true mm. statement? No, mm. it's mm. become that, I think. I know it is. My, mm. my, my days of big mama is over. And I see it every day. Even because I do here, I see a lot of women in their 60s, 70s, um, they're living life in a different way than Big Mama used to live hers. Mm. Over slaving over a kitchen, picking the kids up from school, making sure that they're there when they arrive off the bus, making sure that they tuck them down, put powder on their chest, laying them down. <laughs> their parents oh, picking them up uh, two, uh, way, two okay. days later. You know, right, so right, right. I feel like the Big Mama, my mama definitely wasn't no Big Mama. She never kept my kids. So I think those days are just over and I think because big mamas now have to work they have to figure out how to make it in this uh, you know high expense world so it's like I don't think it's no big mamas and I, I now the the big mamas are saying I didn't raise my kids you better come get to you know mm-hmm. I hear that a lot mm-hmm. the big mamas now are having boyfriends you know I they, they go on sites and trying to yeah. get at that oh, older, you know? how, how old is a is, is average day big mama though 
I mean, think Big Mama like forty, be sixty. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, because they be having them early. Right. Now they be having yeah. them early. Right. And what changed? And so, mama? and so, you be a grandparent, yeah. and you in your, you in your, you know, you're early, 43. early forties, and yeah. you feel like you still got your life to live. As you do. Yeah. And, and yeah. Uh, you know, you're not, you know, sixty plus and seventy, and you know, hanging out, and yeah. so oh, maybe now, down, right, yeah. right, yes. they kids having, and then they're so young. You know, the kids having kids. I mean, yeah. it's always been the case, but I think that that wisdom of Big Mama is is, is missing. Go on, go on. Yeah. It is missing. I take pride in being Big Mama Auntie. Mm -hmm. I'm, the, I'm that. Okay. I, mm -hmm. I still kind of hold that role in some people's lives. I take pride in that because it gives me the opportunity to teach some correct things or or put another perspective into some of these kids. But when I lived in Rockwell, I was they called me Mama Rockwell because mm, okay. I was the doctor. The nurse. I was feeding. For, I was the hairstylist. Wow. Everything. I was the counselor. People would come squat at my house because they were getting that big mama vibe, you know. Yeah, you do have that though. From me, yeah. you have so that. So I would, Nurturing. I would throw that, and I, and right now I still do it to this day. I'll pick up the babies and be like, "Come on, chew on chicken bone and do all kind of stuff." I still do those. Okay. Things. Yeah. But I have you know a question for you though. Do you think the family dynamics would be different if we still had big mamas around? Absolutely. How do you think that would affect our family in this 2018? Because we have so many disrespectful kids today. It's you know, oh, that, that that would slap big mama. That's the, that's big the mama thing. Can't tell me nothing. That's the thing. Would, do we still have the same respect? Or would we still have the same respect for big mama that we did in the 50s and 60s and 70s? Kids now are, are brought up in a way that they're not respecting adults, period, mm -hmm. let alone big mama. I mean, it's like... It's like th you need to be able to respect someone to be able to really listen to them. And yeah. these kids nowadays don't want to listen. Yeah. And so, they're not socialized like that. you know, it, it's it's crazy. So I don't, I don't know. It's just I don't know why that is. I mean, maybe because of the whole family dynamic, you know, the, the uh, you know, it's 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 baffling That's to right. me. It, it really well, is. Like you just said, That's granny's right. got younger. So you have women in their mid 30s with these and that's teenagers. my point because grannies are little mamas now yeah. okay. they're they yeah. not big mamas no more yeah, not. <laughs> they want to be little they want to be little shouties yeah, they, they want to be mama d, d. Wow. There you, mama d there you go wow. yeah I, I think that's and the I, dynamic I that's that changed yeah. that dynamic a lot because mm -hmm. i was sad to see the big mamas go like hold on because that's where our history came from so like if, if my grandmama and my aunties and them they would tell us about history that's the, the black right, history and right. the things they've been through and why it ha you'd be able to look at right. that to connect it to today but that's just not happening now and you see more fa grandfathers picking their kids up like I got I like when I was picking my daughter up from school when she was in elementary Paw Paw was, was there mm. the grandfathers wow. the dads it was a trip to see it reverse you wow. know and I think that they're a little bit more now nurturing you see them at the park with the kids opposed to Big Mama or you see them bringing lunch. That's true. You mm. know, it's just a trip to see the men step up now, the grandpas at this really? point. Mm. You know, I ain't mm. seen that yet. Oh, I've seen, I've it, seen it a lot lately. My daughter would pick up her from school. Be the pawpaws. Yeah. Be the pawpaws. Mm. Be the paw paw. I mean, okay. look at your husband. Joe ain't no Joe. <laughs> he the one that got up and screamed at me. I ain't no paw paw either, though. <laughs> I don't know if he considers himself a paw paw, though. Now, I'm still he daddy. He's the age of a paw paw. <laughs> but you know, like, he's the one. He does take his baby to the park. Uh, he's yeah, he does. He's at the library you know, today. Yeah. That's yeah. what kind of dad I, I, I right. was at that age when, you know, I had a little one that little. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, and yeah, I always yeah. noticed Joe is the one. He's a disciplinary one. He's the one that hurry up. And that's Aquarius trait, too. Like, that nurturing spirit. But. You know, mm -hmm. lady be like, "Go on and get him." <laughs> uh, you see him. Go. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, that whole dynamic. <laughs> no, we know you do your know? part. Uh, wow. I do though. You know, you I do. do. I'm not you gonna do. lie. I do my part. Yeah, you definitely yeah. do. Mm -hmm, I'm not. I get him on the left. You get, get him on the right. 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 Yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> and we and we both have our strengths, you know exactly. what I'm saying? He takes I love to the library. That. I homeschool him, so yeah. you know, I pull yeah. out the math, yeah. the reading. The writing, so yes, I do all of that awesome. stuff. So he, you know, so for the summertime, mama and papa status, that's, that's still day. a little different. That's yeah, yeah, saying. yeah, yeah. I ain't there yet. It's I ain't graduated. Right, right. Though. I ain't graduated <laughs> the papa. The respect that a that a big mama would get, like you saying, that's not there, is to be able to speak in a room, or and everybody would listen. Now, where where that kind of may stay, I, this is just a. I'm not saying this is true because I don't know. I'm not a, from a big family. Mm -hmm. But I do know someone who is from a big family. They do still have a big mama in their family. Mm -hmm. And then they got some aunties behind that that big mama that kind of pull mm -hmm. on that tradition. Okay. But the family is big. Okay. That's good. You know what I'm saying? So maybe that's a, a point, too. If families are getting smaller, these single 
parent family home, so we're losing that dynamic. And, and I think Big Mama is becoming a messy mama. Oh, yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? Because mm. I think back in the day, Big Mama wasn't as messy as the mamas are today. Yeah. And, uh, you know, she had too many kids to be on the phone chopping up with Shirley. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, so today, <laughs> you know, you got mamas that's in everybody's business, yeah. talking about everybody. Amen. You know what I mean? Because Big Mama knew she had a whole lot of business going on. When you have a lot of kids, that's a lot of business that you yeah. have to manage. Yeah. So yeah. you don't have time to be on a telephone running down somebody else's kids when you got about 15 of yours. That's right. You know what I mean? You're trying you to keep Shirley Ann from getting pregnant. And, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you that's have right. a lot that's going on. And so you have a lot of women that be on the phone today. I think they want to be a big mama, but they really don't have the traits of, they may have had a big mama, but they don't have the traits because they're a little more messy. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But they, So they got a little <laughs> mess in them trying, still trying to be a big mama. Mm. Yeah. And it's, and it's not really working. It's not really working that's right. Big mama with Instagram. and <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Facebook. She got selfies and stuff. Yes. <laughs> All in the but you, you mentioned something else though that I think shouldn't shouldn't happen, but I see more of it happening where the family is being divided among the family, like picking out yeah. favorites. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And say, you yeah, know, you got one that. you got one doing well and then you got one struggling and, and so so the favorite stuff, that that's something that, you know, I that's it it shouldn't happen, but, yeah. I, but I've had that happen in my own family. Absolutely. And they Where know, fam everybody knows who's the favorite. Yeah, family members have oh, been no, identified as, no, no, as this is the my favorite. favorite. Yeah. Oh, wow. In front of the other kids, that's happened mm -hmm. in, in our oh, family. Wow. Mm -hmm. In front of the other kids. No, so and so is my favorite. Yeah. And the other kids are left there like, uh, mm -hmm. what? Like, you know, I've seen that happen in the family. See, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm from, it's just me. So I, all the spotlight's on me, but wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's true. devastating to the relationship. Right. So you can't be a big mama if you're going to be pointing out the favorites right. and having the favorites sit on your lap yeah. while right. the, all the other kids are on Come the floor on, brother Joe. and they're looking <laughs> up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. that don't make you feel any, right. any, kind of, any kind of special way. That's right. And so, you know, they, 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 you got to stop like that. you that, Grammy, because it was daddy is, so you always holler exactly. at him. Exactly. You always get hollered at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And don't get mad when, when I choose my other grandma mm -hmm. instead of you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you choosing your, out of your 10 grandkids, mm -hmm. you got a favorite. Okay. Right, right. Just remember, we grow up. But see, that. so now now you, that big family now is divided. Mm -hmm. and, and so you have favorites among the, uh, among the kids. And they yeah. start they start not liking okay. each other, not having Come a relationship on, with each other. Okay. And then now they're not supporting each other. And there we go. We, we imploding from the inside. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, Speak so, and okay, preach. Okay, so I can't. Matter of fact, I'm sitting here thinking mm -hmm. I had a dark-skinned cousin. Mm, mm -hmm. There you go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and my mm -hmm. auntie treated me better mm -hmm. than my dark-skinned mm -hmm. cousin in Color her struck. face. Mm. Wow. Ah, that's right. Color my auntie struck. would do that. She would be like... Yeah, she would always get in trouble. So if something happened, she got the whooping first. Absolutely. It might have been my fault. Wow. Absolutely. But she got the whooping first because she was dark. Dark skin. Yeah. And something. Mm -hmm. I believe it. <laughs> and then families want to know why there's a breakdown in the family right. and not realizing it's coming from the head. Right, right. And it's right. what you I created. Are. Right. Yeah. There you go. And it's what you created in your own family who you felt was better than the other. Now you might have some kids that might, you know, act up some act a little bit better, but it's something that you're creating in your own family. Mm -hmm. That's it. When you start picking out, this is my favorite child mm -hmm. because the other one feels unfavored. Mm -hmm. They feel like they can never live up to the favorite child or always trying to live up. So that's, that's where that people pleasing starts to come in. Yes. Mm -hmm. And lady, right. is this right? And then the cousin duels. Mm. And there right? you go. And is this true or not? They always tend to, whoever their favorite child is, they tend to love their, the grant, that child's, kids too mm -hmm. yep. the same way mm -hmm. like oh, so ooh, them is them Erica kids so I gotta you know do this and I gotta mm -hmm. make sure that they good but then and it's an, another trip like if you never ask for nothing like and you're a child that's just a hustler get it yourself but it's this one you got the other sibling over here that's just always needy need something need something do you know that the 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 and you could be broke and hungry but that matriarch will always go to the one who's needy and let this other one suffer. Oh, I thought you had it. You you had mm. that? Yeah. I didn't know. You mm. you, uh, you know, I'm over here giving everything oh, wow. to him. I didn't know you was half dead. Well, all wow. right, well, I'm going to pray for you. Because right. you know, they're not used to, uh, they're not accustomed yeah. to making yeah. sure that you're good. So right. Right. it's like right. they don't believe when you're not good. Yeah. You know, you it's that a trip. extreme yeah. opposite end. Yep. Like in my family, we had doctors and, and gynecologists, and they would wow. nurture them, but they wouldn't give nobody else any love in the family. Mm. So the ones that were struggling, struggled. 
Wow. wow. Well, you need, and then we'll talk good. about them. You need to get it together. Mm-hmm. Why ain't, what ain't you doing? So you you got the haves and the have nots right that in part. your family. That part. Uh huh. Those that those do and well. Since I, yeah. Since I think about it, I'm like, yeah, that was happening in my family. Mm-hmm. Do you think because they think the ones that are doing well make them look good? Yes. Amen. So we have the doctors, Amen. we have the lawyers. Of course. And one day, that's what they say. And one day they'll grow up and take care of me. Mm-hmm. See, right now yeah. you ain't got nothing. Brown so nose. You, you can't take care of me. Mm-hmm. Yes. But, but, but you know, Dr. John and our family, if I need something, he'll be able to. So I got to treat him well now. Yes. You know, my, my niece is yes. a gynecologist. <laughs> Don't never know her name, just know she's a gynecologist. Mm-hmm. You know, so and so's a doctor over there up in there in LA. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All status. But they got other kids on the family. Yeah, okay, right. it's fine, but. But who you calling when when Grandpa didn't knock you down the stairs? You calling me you know to come protect you know your dad? Right, you know, right. So what, wow. what is that about? You wow. know, figure that out. <laughs> it's not fair to the other grandkids and kids. It's just not fair. And the thing is, you already pre-describing who gonna be successful and who not based that off part. how their start. That part. It's like wait a minute, the kid that that may be struggling, they need more attention. To get get their stuff together, more guidance, maybe maybe some more encouragement than the one that that's all well, independent, that's able like, right. to do their own thing, and you know. So so let me give some attention to help you up a little yeah, bit absolutely. instead of instead of you know putting you to the side and clinging yeah. onto this one who's already successful, got their stuff going on, yeah. have a direction yeah. that you know they're good with. That's true. It's it's that's, that's, that's but okay. another Everitism. question that was in this that I thought was really good. Mm. Why do we treat our friends better than we treat our families? Whew. Well, we treat our friends more like family mm. than our family more like family. Because sometimes family is not loyal and they don't stand for you like a friend will. So is that it? Mm. I, I know for me that's been sometimes, I love my family, uh, especially like I love like all my family. My dad's side is a little bit more strong for our support and stuff. But uh, it's just like some of my friends, like I love them like family because they, I don't even call them. They just know like, okay, Derek, you need to do like it's just it's a blessing to to be able to make friends your family, you know. Mm. And sometimes family come, you can't pick your family members. God just blesses you but with you whoever, can but you can pick your friends <laughs> and who you want to bring into your life, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. on a daily basis. So I think that some people pick good, some people just you know fair weather pick. So. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have siblings? Yeah, I got three brothers, siblings, two right? brothers. Uh, yeah, I got, I got okay. See, that brothers. question for me is different because I don't have any siblings. So my and the cousin dynamic, mm. I didn't grow up with all that. Mm. Mm. I have a lot of cousins that I do not know. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? But I didn't wasn't raised around any of them. It was just always me. Mm. So I can't really relate. Yeah, exactly. you know what I'm saying as far as. All the attention was on me, so any, anything I move, I mess up or do anything, it was just like, ah! Look at Marie. Yeah. <laughs> I think sometimes the family dynamic, you know, you might grow up and you got brothers and sisters and things might happen to cause friction that never gets resolved. And then you guys kind of grow up and just never really yes. have that talk to resolve issues. And then you meet Weird. somebody mm-hmm. that really don't know you know, those issues, or you can just start from scratch, start from clean with somebody else that, that's a friend. Yeah. But the family is like, you know, that dynamic, you could have been a favorite, bears, you could have been bears. not favorite, you could have been, you know, kind of talked about a little bit or whatever, then you never got that family dynamic resolved. Yeah. You just left and grew up and grew out. Exactly. And then you meet somebody else and you just start over with them and you never resolve that issue. Because I, I know me and my brother, we're getting closer now that we're older, but, you know, growing up, he thought that I was somehow, you know, the favorite because wow. I was yeah, doing well dynamic. in school yeah. and he was following after me and the expectation was was for him to do as well as I did in the previous in the previous grade. Wow. And so he always felt like he had to compete with me. I never felt that, but that's what he thought. And so, you know, that was the that was the relationship we had. So now wow. now it's getting better though. That's good, man. I'm proud of you. Hi, welcome to Hot Times with Lady Charmaine. What's your name and where are you calling from? Hello, hi, you're live. Hello. 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 Oh, yeah, I think okay. They hung up. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, okay. they hung up. All right. But but uh, as I was saying, you know, so so 
me and my brother were getting better now that he looked back on, it, on our relationship now. He's like, man, you know, you always this and that and that. And, and so he has a better relationship with me now because he, I, he knows I, I, didn't, I was kind of oblivious to it. I didn't know idea. I'm just kind of doing, just trying to do, yeah, exactly. do me. Yeah. But he being my little brother, I'm the oldest in the family. He was looking up to me and thinking he had to somehow measure up. Yeah, uh, like that's so, going to be hard to yeah, be like. Yeah. <laughs> so he decided to go to the opposite. <laughs> and just just said, you know, we went to a different school. We didn't want to do this, do that. So... But uh, like I said, it, it's better now. And but I think in a in a family, if you don't resolve those issues early, you grew up with those issues, Speed. and you in your thirties and your forties, yeah. and you never resolve what happened in your childhood. And look, it it wasn't even what he thought. No, like it not just at took all. a little communication. And right, really understand. That's it. Hi, you're live with Hot Topics with Lady Charmaine. What's your name, and where are you Ooh. calling from? I guess they their phone must be dropping. Okay, I think. must have an issue oh, with the phone. Right. All right. <laughs> hey, but keep on trying. I know you want to try on. to get in. That's okay. right. Keep on trying. Well, if you, you want to try, maybe give outside. us a call at nine one six two two six nine two two six. We are talking about the family dynamic. You know, people don't get along today, and like the person said, it just se seems like when they see everybody it, together, it's going to be at a funeral because right now it's like the grandparents favor certain grandchildren. You got siblings that treat their friends better than their own siblings and it's like the family dynamic is just really a mess. Have you seen that in your own family? Give us a call 916-226-9226 or not have you just seen it? Are you one of those ones that treat other people better than you treat your own family? Because it's, it's hard when you're growing up in a large family. Mm -hmm. I can just imagine a lot of the jealousy that's in a large family mm -hmm. oh, yeah. because oh, yeah. especially if you have a person that they might be number two of seven kids. Mm. So they never got the attention, That's true. you know, because, you know, when there's new babies popping up, you don't need the babies always getting attention and, and you get pushed back. But then you get pushed back as a as a surrogate mother. Yeah. Uh. yeah. So you don't have a oh, chance yeah. to be a child. Yeah. You don't have a chance to be a child because now you got to go get the diapers, take care of son. So now yeah. you're babysitting. Now you got to learn how to cook early because you have to take care of the kids. Mm -hmm. You hold a resentment yeah. because of that. too. It, exactly. And then that's when some people end up leaving the house early yeah. mm. because they want to try to leave all of that responsibility and grow up and ju just try to be their own person yeah. because they're tired of being the babysitter, cooking and basically being mama. Mm -hmm. You know, that that's a whole lot. If that was you, give us a call. 916-226-9226. Do experience that in your own family mm, mm. now here is another <laughs> this hot topic was sent to me and they said okay good morning i thought it was interesting they said here's a hot topic a friend of them a friend of theirs ended up telling them about a website where people with stds can meet each other because a young woman's father had herpes he went on a website and found another woman that had herpes and they are married today would you actually <laughs> join a website if you knew that you had an STD to be able to feel comfortable with somebody else that had the same disease where you can actually talk openly and get rid of it? <laughs> Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> My God, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, and be able to dude. talk openly and then basically you know that that elephant is no longer in the room because everyone <laughs> on this site has it. Hi, you're live with Hot Topics with Lady Charmaine. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Lady Charmaine. This is Shari. Shari Wilson. Hey, hey Shari. How are you? Hey, hey. <laughs> Strong woman. Hey. I love this topic. Oh, thank you. I love this topic, but you know what? Growing up, I, me and my sister had this situation where people will call her and, you know, speak life into her. But when it came down to me, you know, they would talk about me or, you know, she's the fast one. Mm -hmm. And it was my sister who made sure that she poured into me and lifted me up and made sure that uh, that didn't, wow. um, that I didn't stray away or actually go in an opposite direction based off what people were saying about me. You know, oh, um, that's good. So I, 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 I've seen that in my family. And then also, you know, why do you treat friends uh, more loyal or treat friends better than you treat your own family? Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes, like Derek said, it's about loyalty. And, you know, you got family who y'all don't even speak. You know, you right, try right, to right. bring people together. True. You try to bring the family together. But you got these friends who don't know anything, don't want anything from you. They just want your friendship, you know, mm -hmm. and they will right. come over. You're sick. They checking on you. They dropping out food. You know, they, they remember your birthday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. <laughs> it's just, That's so it's real. Just, it's, it's, it's different. Like Derek said, you're, you're able to pick these friends, mm -hmm. you know. Right. And I think that's more special than the friends that's actually that you're given at birth. Right, you know, right, the right. family that you're given at birth with the friends you actually can pick to become family. So, because um, I have 
friends that's closer to me than some of my cousins. You yeah. know, wow. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that's true. Absolutely. That's my little input. Thank All you, right. girl. Like love you. Love you. Love you too. Talk to you guys later. All right. All right. No, that, that was really good, though, because sometimes, yeah, you know, you have friends that are very yep. close to you and they do become like family. But then I've seen people who let you just put their friends over their family. Mm -hmm. And then before you know, when their friends dump them, then they want to come back, back to, to you. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And mm. so, you know, so but I'm so I'm, I love the part when she said her sister yeah, her was sister. the one yeah. that something. made her feel comfortable That's and good. lifted her uh, up and spoke into her. And That's I good. think. You know, and you know, when you have somebody that stand up for you, I think that's beautiful. Girl, yeah, and then like, the yeah. fact that, that, that all that love was coming to her sister, and she said, no, nah, like, I, right, right, I right. detect oh, this, I see it, and I make love on you. Yep, that's Absolutely. good. Absolutely. Hi, you're live with Hot Topics with Lady Charmaine. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Oh, excuse me, I couldn't hear you. Uh, I can hear you. <laughs> can, you turn the, uh, can you turn the volume down in the background? What's your name? Where are you calling from? My name's Sam. I'm calling from Richmond. Hey, Sam. Thank you for calling hey, from Sam. Richmond. What's your question? Or did you have a comment? Well, well, I got a comment on the uh, the STD's website. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and then he laughs. All right. Okay. And then he giggles. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, it's like it's like it's like a uh, that's like a a, a a loaded question in a way. But I mean, I I, I sort of agree with it, mm -hmm. and the reason why I agree with it because it's better for people to do that than mm -hmm. to go out and mislead someone and then turn around and give them, I mean, like, 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 like herpes is a disease that you can't get rid of, mm -hmm. yeah, you know? Yeah, so that's right. if, if, yeah, if that's the case, I mean, that, that, I, I mean, I agree that, that, that'd be a good idea, you know, for mm -hmm. people that, that does have that, because again, when everybody don't, don't reveal that they have something, mm -hmm. you, you know, mm -hmm. right. and, 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 and then, a man or a woman be misled and then they, they wind up with this old disease. And, you know, I, I, I mean, I don't know people that, that, that done got caught up in them situations and then committed suicide. Amen. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I think their lives were over. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, to me, I feel that that would, in a way is a great idea if people would do that, because like I said, you're not, you, you, you know, everything is, is on the table. You right. know, I mean, that's, that's like totally be honest. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, right, right. Okay. True, true. That's true. That's right. Thank you, Sam. You're calling from my city. Thank you for calling in. Thank you, Sam. No problem. Okay, bye All right. Bye. He got a good point. Yeah, talk and, about and the website together. exists. Uh, yeah. So I think, to me, I think it was brilliant to come brilliant. up with that website. Yeah. Absolutely. Because, you know, when you have something like that, a herpes or AIDS, it's going to be difficult for you to bring that up. Yeah. And I remember I had did a show because I wanted to know, how do you tell someone that you have, you know, an STD? Mm. 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 Right. Now, how do you, because I know that's difficult and, to and let win. Them, Right. And when. You know, because now you have those fears that they may leave you right. once you tell them what's going to happen. So I could just imagine the stress that's on the individual. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. if I tell them, would they leave me? Of course. Or put you right. on blast and start making up lies on top of your, right. your disease. Right. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> Oh, this, this, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, right, right. All that. <laughs> right. So I, I, so I think that oh it might, it probably make it easier. What were you getting ready to say, Marie? No, I was laughing at him, but I'm like thinking that is true because now you, I mean, a, wonder, a lot of wonderful things can happen. You can talk about your medications and, oh, that's yeah. what you're taking. It helps you feel better and yeah. so forth and whatnot. <laughs> but you're not dead when you get an STD. It's a point. You still mm -hmm. are a person that's living Absolutely. and walking around on this planet. I think it is a good idea. Like you said, elephant in the room, that's totally taken right. out of the, that's, that's totally that's gone. That's because true. now you got people who can relate to exactly what you're talking about on yeah. whatever level. Right. And they can appreciate you for who you, you are. are. They can yeah. look past that because everybody. Now, I'm going to play not the devil's advocate because I don't yeah, like are. using that. Yeah, yeah, you are. Yeah. But look, yeah, are. look. But what about, you know, because some people are sedentary with diseases. They be like, I don't want to be doing it <laughs> with the same person that got the same thing as I got. True point. You know, or like how some people, I don't want nobody just like me. You know what I mean? Like, that's the same with diseases. Like, they might not want to keep getting the same disease because I heard that if you keep if you do it with the same person like I got herpes and you have like a, a lower level of herpes you can start it. yeah you could and you had a breakout like and you didn't have a breakout for a year you could get a breakout or something like mm. that you know while you having a, a sex with a person with a breakout 
I mean, you hear so many herpes stories now because I so guess many herpes that stories. and and what is it? Gonorrhea, herpes and chlamydia. Well, wait, 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 but wait a minute. If, if you got gonorrhea, or chlamydia, you, you can get that cured, yeah, not necessarily true. be on that's the true. site. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think we're, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not putting myself on the site temporarily. Right. You, you talk about the big wop wop. <laughs> you know I'm saying. <laughs> I'm talking about. What <laughs> if you ain't got no medical insurance now, brother Joe? <laughs> oh, well, I've got a real for a minute. Tell me, I'll be stuck with this for a few days. Let me go on the website and uh, try to get some dates while I'm at it. Oh, well, right, like while you playing. Let me get some gotti gotti. Since I got this chlamydia, let me go ahead and holler at these Stop it, <laughs> Talking about, she kind of oh, cute up there, but she got the chlamydia. Goodness. I think now we can hook up. <laughs> oh, man. What? Oh, wait a minute. Oh my Y'all, God. Wait a minute. Please <laughs> forgive us. We yeah, don't yeah. need to be I mean, I'm not trying to be I'm not no, trying we, to be We're just making it lighthearted. We don't want to right. offend anybody. Uh, but, but, right. But, I mean, right. you know, but if, I guess they're saying if you got temporary urges. <laughs> right. <at> hey. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm thinking the site <laughs> would be for okay. people with, with, with herpes. Maybe well, more, a severe case of HPV. Yeah. Syphilis. Yeah. Well, is syphilis is syphilis treatable, curable? I heard that's running rampant, too. don't get it treated. Soon enough, you can go blind. Sure stuff. can. Oh, okay, okay. You can get sores on your hands and your feet. My my, man. Yeah, untreated. It's pretty ugly, untreated. Yeah, yeah syphilis will stick with you. But then now they're saying these gonorrhea and chlamydia are supernovan. They yeah. turn into a whole other kind of disease now. Ooh. It's kind of sticking with you a little longer, and the medication ain't working. So you might can. It's hang probably out. Yeah, it's probably all those oh, no. anti antibiotics, uh, biotics, with, and yeah, you know whatever. preservatives and stuff that we eat now making the diseases know, stronger. So. I mean that's a good point though. But I think that uh, website is excellent. I yeah, no, I I agree, especially because you can feel like you're ostracized if you're you know got that disease. You're you're something that's Absolutely. incurable, and yeah. you're out there on your own and feeling lonely and feeling like nobody understands you. And you can make, find somebody that does right on the website. I think that's. that's uh, Everybody needs companionship. Yeah, well, support so system. So I, I have a que I have a question for you, Derek. Mm -hmm. How do hairstylists handle people they may have viruses that are incurable? Well, because we're in the industry to where, because this is the only other industry that you can really touch somebody other than a doctor or a dentist or a tattoo artist. It's very uh, seldom you able to be the in fluids, a career that, right? yeah, mm. where you can literally put your hands on somebody. So w with that being said, um, you can catch all kind of stuff. Like we're trained in cosmetology school on how to handle sores on the scalp, um, open wounds, um, mm. Um, scratches, abrasions. So if a person get a chemical burn, they immediately start pussing up and bleeding, and you can touch that, touch your eye or mouth. That's open, and then next thing you know, you have it. Mm. Um, uh, and then we have a, 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 a product called Quats that kills all the bacteria. I think HIV one and, mm -hmm. and two. Um, yeah. So we got, and a lot of people don't um, Quats their combs and their tools and stuff, which is sad because mm. you're going and you putting that right onto somebody else's head. Oh, they don't have nothing. How do you know? How do you know mm -hmm. they don't have a uh, lice or something on their head or anything? Like, you can get anything. You know, I remember one time I was taking, this is a true story. I, I have witnesses. You you can, uh, uh, I was, the, when I first got in this industry, I was cutting a weave out of a, a woman that was homeless, I think, for a year. And then she started getting her life back, getting the job and everything. And next thing you know, I cut the weave. I mean, the weave was like about six inches grown up from her head and you guys know that's a lot of new growth mm. so i had to cut like the weave out and when i was cutting things literally were flying out i don't know if they were gnats whatever but i'm such a mm. and when i'm in there i'm in there i'm not gonna tell say i'm gonna stop or nothing mm. so i just kept cutting and cutting to get it down to the new growth where i could give it a shortcut and style and everything and sure enough because of her scalp not being manipulated because of uh, things living and embedding mm. and, and growing and wow. building families in there that she had a nest in her hair. When I got down to the root, she had a nest. The, the, the um, fly, it was a fly nest. The fly had embedded itself in her scalp and started creating babies. Wow. So it, it laid a nest. So I, I couldn't even... I couldn't even. I didn't even know what the hell How I was looking at. How did the fly get in there, in between them tracks? Laying down, she fought for six hours and stuff, crawling in her head while she was homeless, all kind of oh, stuff, you know. So, and she's not combing it. Yeah, mm. if you starts off as a maggot that digs in and it's See? not gonna go anywhere. It's there gonna you grow go. and feed. And I mm. mean, you guys, I'm yeah. not saying nothing new. Look right. on the internet and say hair uh, trauma or, or stuff that's. Yeah. 
so much wow. stuff, it can y'all. Carry a lot of stuff. So it, it can. Does, it can be just as dangerous. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, that that is a big problem for us as as artists, cosmetologists, barbers, and all that type of stuff. You are risking your life on a daily basis, dealing with people that that uh, may not be disclose everything on their client record sheet or mm. tell you things that that can uh, infect and affect you. Wow, so. that's wow, that's deep. That. Cause see, I I thought this video that I had watched um, recently, yeah, it was a video that I had seen. Excuse me, it was a video I seen recently of a little boy. They went to the doctor. He had something in his ear, and they was digging and digging out, and it ended up being a cockroach in there. Uh. In his ear, and it was full of wax, and they they ended up pulling the body out. But how long had it been in there? Because it was that deep. Part. Uh-huh, and, mm. and they kept trying to pull it out. Mm. And for the parents, and I have cleaned the child's ears to have that much wax and built up in there. Sometimes you don't know what you're dealing with. That's a serious business imagine that you're in. That. Come no, on. no, no, really, imagine that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, uh, no, I, I imagine that. So, give us a call 916 226 9226. If you're a hairstylist, you want to hear some of your stories. Did you That's ever right. find anybody that had, had a nest in their head? What was the oh like the God. yuckiest thing you ever found uh. doing somebody's hair? You don't even Ooh. think about those type of things when you're going to get your hair done. You don't. You no, really no. don't. I would have never thought, but understand her living situation, you know, and you were doing. You know, a wonderful service for her. Yeah. But I'm sure you probably never thought you would experience I something never like did, that, lady. And then on top of that, how, how do you treat something like that? I tr- I treated the best way I could. I didn't. Okay. Most people was going Ugh, like the two people when the salons where they did freak out. Freak but out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. you know, and I'm not saying anything about women. Women handle things differently when behind the chair <laughs> than so the, than men do. Mm-hmm. It just does. They mm-hmm. just do. And so I I I handle it. I was. T- holding you my breath. Like spray and antiseptic. No, I took her immediately to that shampoo bowl and, and scrubbed off what I could, you know, because it was stuck. Like, mm. so I had to take the babies off and mm. literally flip them oh, off. Come on. Ah. And so that's how I knew that it had it had Ooh, Lord, embedded Jesus. in her scalp mm. too much, Ooh. where it was you could stick your finger down here about this much. So it's like, and ain't no telling how long she had it in her head. So it after I put her in the dryer, it sealed up a little bit because the moisture was out. So the dryer kind of pulled out the infection or whatever. And then I used some tea tree to kind of mm-hmm. get, you know, all the rest of it out. But she came back two weeks and it was, it was closed. It was about that big, the Whoa. whole, so. Saved her life. Yeah, man. she got a job. And now I don't know what happened to that lady. Saved but her um, life, though, from that, That was though. years ago. But see, but. That, that when you think about that, think about the homeless people that are on the street. Yeah. One of the last things they're really concerned about is personal grooming sometimes because, Can't like, getting it. a haircut or keeping themselves clean. You know, for, I mean, for the most part, I mean, hair, I mean, you do the best you can with your body, I guess, when you're out there. But yeah. you, you perform a service like a haircut on somebody that's been homeless for a long time. You know, you're, you're liable to get that kind of, you know, stuff that's in the hair. What you don't know, don't know what they expect. That's no. uh, that's. But, but the service is, is just tremendous to be able to do that yeah. because of a person's esteem, what it does to them oh. when they get themselves she cleaned cried, up. brother Joe. Like when I turned her around, she literally started. Man. And I started getting like emotional. I'm like, dang it. Don't wow. Turn it up a little bit. Don't, Derek, don't you do Derek, it. You turn up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, because I'm like, man, to be able to, to change this woman's right. really life over right. a hairstyle. Saved her, was, saved her life. It, it changed mine. Like that's when I knew that that this business can really affect, affect people, people yeah. in a different right, way. So, right. yeah, you see all kind of stuff. Wow. It's a trip. That's beautiful. That, that's really beautiful. Well, okay, here's our next question. Now, this is interesting. Okay, this is for all of my married folks, those who are looking to be married, you're, you're dating, you're engaged. How long should the person be married that's going to be counseling you? How long would you like for them to be married? And second question. <laughs> 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 this is a question that was sent to me because... Um, and someone decided that they wanted to become a marriage coach just being married only five days. Uh, Do you think? Me. Now, let me tell you about this story. I never forget a friend of mine. She sent me a video and she was like, you got to listen to this message, Charmaine. It's on Proverbs 31. You got to hear this. And I told her, I said, well, I, I, I really didn't want to hear it. She said, I'm going to send it to you anyway. And I said, I didn't want to hear it because the person who was doing it and telling us how to be Proverbs 31 women hadn't been married long enough for me to hear what they have to say. Now, I'm going to hear you once I know you've been through some stuff. You've been yeah, through the storm yeah, and you yeah, can tell yeah. me how to come out. Because this individual, I said, they had only been married a year when they did the video. So I said, they're going to have to be married five years or more in order for me, even longer than that, in order for me to really hear them. That's because, right. you know, sometimes you're in that honeymoon stage after one year, oh, yeah. two years. You know what I mean? Full so of you, revelation, right? Right, right. You know what I mean? <laughs> People, I, I want to I uh, be marriage counselors and I want to do classes. And how long you been married? Was that one of the criteria, lady? Because, okay, well. Wait, wait, no, I'm not even done. Oh. So I told her, I said, well, after this individual has been married for at least five years, and if they decide to do a video, I said, then 
I said, I would take a listen because that means they've been through some things because you start getting that five year, seven year itch to bounce up out. And so when you, so how do you, how do you handle that itch when that itch starts to come? The bounce, when the bounce well, comes. Uh, the how bounce. do you handle you know, maybe I change Well, this is, so this is what had happened. When that individual ended up, they were coming up on their five year wedding anniversary and they got divorced. Yeah. So I told them, this is why I didn't need to hear the first year tape. You still in your honeymoon stage. Uh, so now you're trying to tell women, yeah, you need to do this for your man. Okay, now. When your man get on your nerves, are you still going to do doing that for him? <laughs> that part. When, when he gets on <laughs> your nerves. I'm serious. Though. So I want to know how you handle, because they went through a, something that was really big and it was very public, but they mm. never made it out of it. See, I, I need to see how you come up out of that. Yeah. And then you can come and tell me That's your true. story of how you made it out. They didn't right, make right. it out. So they right. had their first big major public thing and never made it out. Yeah. So, they, so that's my thing. How do you make it? See, I remember there was, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell this story, y'all. <laughs> Oh God, I, I think it involves me. But yeah, probably. Oh, no, probably. Yeah. Go, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> she's looking at me. I'm going to tell the story. Like, okay, I'm in it. <laughs> Let's go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, it was kind of funny. At the, at the time, the Toyota probably, company, they, probably, loved, they loved us. Probably, like probably for you, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, then, so this, this is what happened, everybody. This was like, seven, nah, my husband and I next month will be married 20 years. And so I don't remember what year yes, we were in yeah, at this particular yeah. time, but it was one of those years. Yeah. But anyway, it was kind of funny because, okay, my car was parked at a grocery store and a gentleman ended up hitting my car. And he was so nice, he left a note on my car and, you know, insurance information. So his insurance company uh, repaired my car. I took it to the, to the car shop. As soon as I get my car out the shop that week, my husband ends up getting into a car accident. So my husband ended up having to take his truck to the same place that I had just got my car repaired. So then my husband gets his truck out of, <laughs> out of the shop. So we were having one of those little heated fellowships, right? I love that. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Little heated fellowship. So my husband decides that he wants to go in reverse out of our garage without looking didn't notice that my car is sitting right there. So as he's going in reverse, he hits my car. Now, mind you, in a three-week period, they didn't seen my car twice. <laughs> his his car car. <laughs> they like, what's going on? And so I was so upset with my husband, but I heard the Lord speak to me and tell me, you remember this, man? I remember. I remember. I remember. <clears throat> told me yeah, to I make was him, there. <laughs> and told me to make him breakfast. See, everything wow. in me, because see, it mm. cost for that damage, it was $4,000 because oh, the way my car at the time was made. <laughs> They couldn't just take a panel off. They had to take the whole side because how they made it, it was like made in one piece. And so, and plus the car had a special paint that was expensive. Yeah, pearl. Yeah, it was, it was, it was like this pearl, pearl white. white. So mind you, this is the second time they didn't see my car in a month. Uh, right. So just imagine, look how your face is looking. <laughs> the yeah, they said, probably think, no, see, the what first y'all time doing? the man's insurance fixed the car. The second time, your insurance. my no, my no. pocket, not oh, no. Oh, the you bank were account. Right out of pocket, right out the hands. Jesus. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, that hurt. Now, mind Ooh. you, my, my husband, uh, he had to pay for his because he had rear-ended a car. So he had just had to pay for yeah. his car. That was and a then, bad year. Yeah, it was, it was, a, it was a real tough year. But, <laughs> but the moral to this story was how I came up out of it. Mm -hmm. Because I had to literally go downstairs and make my husband breakfast and serve him breakfast in bed. Mm. And my husband, he was so thankful. I never forget he thanked me because he knew he was wrong. Mm. You know what I mean? But it took everything that I had. And so I wouldn't be sitting here telling this story if I didn't allow God to speak to me. Ah. Because, mm. you know, you, you, would rather, you would rather make the grits and throw the grits. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> or just be Mary. resentment, resenting him and angry. And but you know, but I, the, man, man, that's I love that. And that's what I like expected was her to just now. You time I told you Absolutely. so. You shouldn't have did. You know, and I you're expected gonna react. It and I was ready for it. And then she came with a totally different way. Those experiences need to happen. You know what I'm saying? You so, so, we need to write a book. Just it, 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 it was right all there. God. That right I wanted to come that way. That's the way I wanted to come. I wanted oh, yeah. to come oh, yeah. and dig in. You know, I mean, I mean, I want to have a plate and fork to dig into him, not him dig into the pool <laughs> <laughs> but what did it do for you like you in mean? that moment to where oh you shifted like I, and he was like are you really doing his what did you do what did, like how did it make you did it make you come and say okay well I, I'm gonna start doing this more what did you do you know what it made me feel good to know that I allowed God to be in charge I was mm. just gonna say well, you heard it, the word right it, it made me feel good to know that I allowed God to because I know what Charmaine wanted to do but I was able to be obedient in that moment and it's really hard sometimes to obey but to, to put myself into submission
Yeah, because that yeah. flesh was talking right. to you. Right. And, I because, heard. That's big. and, and because the Lord let me know, that. he needed that because he was already beating Beat himself. Beat down, exactly. He was beating that's how very that yeah. we beat because we see like, dang it now. Yeah. Yeah. See, for and me, my husband's concern is always was, on money. His mind is always on money. So he just got his truck fixed, and then my car is going back into the shop. So, you know, her car costs money to yes, get repaid, you know what I'm saying right. so mm-hmm. so when the Lord said mm-hmm. make breakfast mm-hmm. all I could see is myself going <laughs> 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 and having to do it with a so I'm, everything so I'm in that kitchen <laughs> oh we but <laughs> <laughs> This fan's doing it. But but see, you you mentioned something. You mentioned the S word. Right. Good. Submit. Mm-hmm. And we always good. think, you know, you submit to the man, oh. submit to the woman, you right, submit right, to each right. other. But ultimately, word. your submit is to God. There you and go. if he says it, no matter how you feel, you gotta submit. You gotta line right. up. And so 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 that in itself, that to me, that that helped heal me and, and I don't you know, I've we been good going forward, but that was a bad year. But I was bad on myself. Like you said, I was beating myself up over mm-hmm, it. Mm-hmm. Talking about she, the expenses, what we could have done. Your wife was just not going to come up and chew your toes But I felt off. supported. Right. You know, I felt, felt, I felt like I felt supported. Yeah. It's like, okay, we in this together. We're going to come out of this together. That was my attitude now that she was able to do that. So, so if those things ain't happened in your marriage counseling you, given, Jesus. I don't want to hear you is the point. Mm. There you go. You, you ain't getting that in day five of your marriage. Not you ain't. Not what not you mean? You're not getting it in the first four years. What <laughs> you mean? You still <laughs> trying to figure out how <laughs> stuff working and yeah, yeah, and yeah. I learned from that. I'm gonna start doing it because y'all taught me that something. That was my point. That that taught me something, mm-hmm. right? That that mm. that act no, right that's there. A, that was big. That was huge. Because mm-hmm. in the moment you want to, and y'all was just arguing of having a fellowship. Be, right, of course right. you wanted like, oh, see, I told you what to do. You know that took a lot. Like I'm. My head goes off to you because that changed the whole dynamics of how that day could have went. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I've been there. You know? No, no, this was the next day. This mm-hmm. was the next day. Mm-hmm. You know, I was but still he, hot. Oh, so you made the breakfast the next day, the not next immediately morning. after. Mm-hmm. Okay, it was well, the next that's morning. still good. But, you know, although I was that's quiet, excellent. but, you know, the next, because, you know, when you think about it, now you got to call the shop yeah. to put your car mm-hmm. in the shop. Mm-hmm. And every time you think about it, it's making you upset. <laughs> yeah, of course. But, but the Lord had to work on me and, and I allowed and I allowed him to do that. I love that. Hi, thank you for calling into Hot Topics. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, this uh, Sal again. You called me Sam earlier. <laughs> oh, your name is Hi, is this Sal Garcia? Yes, Sal Garcia. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Hey, what's up, Sal? <laughs> Thank you for calling in. I love him and Shine. Okay. So much. So, 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 so I'm sitting here listening, right? Mm-hmm. And your question was, <laughs> how long uh, should the person that's that's counseling you be married, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Ain't that ain't that what the question yeah, was? That was yeah, that was the, the question. Okay, <laughs> so for me, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I um, I've been married twice. Okay, I just give you a little, a, a little my, a little bit of my history, right? Okay. my first marriage didn't work out because of me, because of of my lifestyle. I wasn't saved. Mm-hmm. I was, you know, I, I was running the streets. I was doing a whole, whole, a whole lot, <laughs> you know, when I was younger, and right. uh, it's my my fault. My mm-hmm. fault, you mm-hmm. know, even though we both did things, but it was basically because of me that, you know, it, it, it didn't work. So I didn't get counseling uh, during that during that marriage. Right. And, and uh, my second marriage, uh, me and my wife went through some things and we, we, we did receive receive counseling. Right. Mm-hmm. But to me, I think I'd rather be. I'd rather be counseled by a person that has a previous lifestyle mm-hmm. of what I have mm-hmm. and that have converted over mm-hmm. uh, to God and that's mm-hmm. living okay. the word mm-hmm. and, and, and being uh, love to his wife, showing love to his wife rather, and be able to endure things. Because again, in the marriages, you endure a whole lot of uh, differences because mm-hmm. again you're two mm-hmm. imperfect people right. trying to come together to make a perfect marriage Correct. that come ain't on. gonna never be perfect you can make it what mm-hmm. what you can make it <laughs> so mm-hmm. to me i uh and this is my this just me myself that i would rather have someone that that that's counseling me that been, been, been through what i went been through somewhat mm-hmm. you know have have somewhat of a of a, a previous background kind of reflect on what what where I come from that I can look at and be like okay well if he can do it I know that I, mm. that that God must be able to work it out for me even I mean I know he can cuz I I'm, I'm a believer mm-hmm. you know but again if if I'm if I'm newly married and like you said you know the first three to four years you know it's peaches and creams especially if if y'all ain't known each other 
that long, mm-hmm. you know, y'all been together two two years or whatever, and you got married, you know, it's still brand new. People mm-hmm. still on their best behavior. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> what I'm saying is that when 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 them storms, you know, when them storms come in. When she feel comfortable, when you feel comfortable, now you you picking your nose, now you're rubbing. Your <laughs> back. I mean, you know, you doing right, all I that stuff. Yeah, we we, we <laughs> know. Comfortable. We you know. Y'all laying in the bed, you passing gas, you laughing. I mean, that type of stuff. You right, get what right, I'm right. saying? Mm-hmm. So when 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 the newness wears off, there and like you, you said, the problems come in because, mm-hmm. uh, I, I mean, and and. I, I didn't. I didn't been through stuff in my in in my marriage where you know we as 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 you say we have in a fellowship and then it turns south mm-hmm. you know and now we at each other and we can't even talk you know right. what I'm saying right. so yeah. but again you have to listen to what God is saying mm-hmm. to you you can't mm-hmm. just let the enemy come in because again when when them things do come it's basically the enemy trying to you know, maneuver and, and be that puppet master that he is to try to ruin what what God has brought together. Because if you really know that God brought you your husband or brought you your wife, you'll have a better understanding mm-hmm. on how to maneuver in, in your marriage. But again, going back to the question, I need someone that if someone's going to counsel me, I need someone that that's kind of uh, uh, resembles what I have been through mm-hmm. to help me get through that and they can you identify. Know, mm-hmm. okay well i have a question i have a question yeah. even with your statement you're making so that person identifies with you but how long would they have had to be married for you to hear what they had to say about marriage mm-hmm. in the counseling i get the part when you're saying what, somebody who can relate to who you are but if they were only married a month would that still impact you he may be uh, like you and understand I mean, your it, world it, you travel but as far as marriage mm-hmm. you 20 years in he only two mm-hmm no no and i get that i get that i mean you know he he i i i, I would want someone that that at least have 10 years in that have been right. been, okay. been been in that have been tested that have been trialed mm-hmm. i mean i would need someone that 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 has a a a, a little bit of 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 a fight you know mm-hmm. because again i i enjoy speaking to older people that have been married 30 40 years mm-hmm. because again i ask i ask them how You've been married so long, you know, <laughs> and, 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 and they, mm-hmm. right? Like you um, know, and, and, yeah. So go ahead. Because what I was going to say, I just met a woman, and she's been married fifty-five years. Wow! And I said, I bet you have some stories to tell, because because mm-hmm. marriage it it takes a commitment to make mm-hmm. it through. And it's not what you go through, it's how you go through it and come then on. how you come out of it. Come right. on. Because mm-hmm. in order for anybody to stay together any amount of time, it takes some, as my old pastor used to say, some stick to itness mm-hmm. to be able to be committed yes. to this individual. And if you haven't been through anything, how right. are you going to tell me how to come out of it? Right, right, Because right. um, even, Sal, while you're on the phone, because I remember when my husband, you know, we was having a lot of heated fellowships. And so we had gone. A lot gone, of heated fellowships. So we had, we, had gone, <laughs> we had gone to marriage counseling. <laughs> and so oh, yeah. I always like to know, well, how is your marriage going right now you were interviewing the counselor <laughs> yeah i was <laughs> right. i was to be able to qualify to counsel yeah. us right. tell us about you right so right. she, she flipped the role pay? she flipped it and right and and, and it was a male counselor and he told me that he and his wife at the time remember they were kind of going through having yeah, some problems going through it so issues. then i picked up my purse i said well, you 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 can't, can't counsel me. me right now yeah. so we walked out That's right. you go home and get your stuff straight yeah and then so you come back and you what talk did he do he just remember we never went back we never went back and looked at me like yeah she did yeah <laughs> yeah. You go no, home. No, you ain't that. Pay. No, you're not at work. <laughs> and, and I'm not gonna pay you to tell me what I need to do, and you ain't doing that. it because you gotta pay them. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you do. yeah, yeah. I think you it, they were separated or going through some stuff, some yeah. issues, and, but mm-hmm. but he was honest with what he was going through. I'm but that wasn't what, what we yeah, needed right, right, right. here. We, no. we needed we didn't need nobody on one leg. Yeah, they married. So to Sal's point, Sal, I totally agree with you. So thank you so much for calling in. Thank you, Sal. Oh yeah, no, no, no. It's it's it's, it's all love. It's all love. Now, w- one thing is that I, I I even though I did what I did in my first marriage, I did have a a a, a my 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 parents. They stayed married. They they've been married. Well, my dad passed away already, but they was married. My mom was and my dad was married until my dad passed away, and then when I mean they still married. He just he's just in a, in a different life now. Amen. But that that was my 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 example. Look, I, that, what 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 I can look forward to, regardless of of what what they went through, mm-hmm. I mean they stayed together because I've seen 
the uh the struggle that 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 they went through you know mm-hmm. but again my first marriage again i and and i can be honest and, and say that it didn't work because of me because of my previous lifestyle because of how i i was living mm-hmm. so that's the reason why and and i don't i don't i don't repent it i don't apologize to my first wife mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you know and i let her know you know that i know it was because of me you know we was childhood of uh uh, Sweet together house, as, yeah. as kids, I think I think when I met her, she was like in the seventh grade, something oh, like that. Mm-hmm. And you know, we, st- we yeah, so we, and we was together for I mean, ye- uh, years, years. I mean, I, I think you, I think Sal, uh, I, I want to hold on. I want to ask I, you a question, I, Sal. Let me ask you a question because I hear a lot from people yeah. when they say them and their spouses got together. We were really really young. Do you think that because you were with her for so long that you just got comfortable and was looking for something different? in a challenge does that come into play uh, in a marriage i've never no. asked anybody that question before i'm curious no you know you you know you know what it was it was i mean you know I, i'm 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 a dude from the streets you know mm-hmm. i grew up i grew up in in uh, you know in richmond mm-hmm. uh, i grew up hustling in the mm-hmm. streets and and then i accumulated a lot of wealth when i was young through the drug trade mm-hmm. through the hustle trade through all that so you know when when with, with that lifestyle comes you know is, is money women and cars mm-hmm. so I, I i didn't respect my first wife mm. as far as that because i didn't know you know what i'm saying because again i was raised by by my, my father was in home but i left home at an early age i left home like when i was 13 14 years old i mm. left because I, I i thought i was grown and i wanted to do my own thing Ooh, my parents didn't answer. approve of my lifestyle mm. and, and my dad gave me an ultimatum either you're going to ship up or you gonna ship out so i shipped out you know so it it, it, it was more it, it, i'm not gonna say i was comfortable but again when when you're living in that lifestyle and you having it, it had, i mean when when i i had a million dollars at the age of 18 so you know it was like you know i i mean it, that that it, and 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 i tell i i used to always tell my wife that uh um the the scripture what what prophets the man to gain the whole world but to lose the soul. That mm-hmm. scripture used to always pop up in my head. Even even before I was saved, I knew that scripture. And I didn't know why, but now after I gave my life to Christ, I know why because again I was dead inside. Even mm-hmm. though I was having all this this this, this money and having this lifestyle, I was Sal, dead you just inside. preaching. I I, I, <laughs> right, right, right. I was just thinking that you I, 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 I was dead. So you know, so so again, I mean, to Sal, answer your question, it wasn't that you. I was comfortable. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I thank you. I, I I got the gist. But I know Sal's a preacher too. Yes, he is. <laughs> yes, he is. But Sal, I, I thank you so much, and I really do appreciate you. And thank you so much for calling in and definitely sharing uh, your heart with us today. Thank and thank you for watching the show. I appreciate it. Oh yeah, no problem, sister. God bless you. And God, God bless have you a, too. A over there. God bless you, you Sal. Thank, thank you. you. All right. You guys. All right. <laughs> No, that's good, though, to hear that, you know, that God changed his life. But, Absolutely. you know, you want somebody you want to see somebody that's come through to show you how to do it, because it, it's, it's hard to tell somebody how to raise kids. and You never had any. I, I right. got a question, though. Mm-hmm. Would, would a divorce counselor have more more information, more insight on how to stay married than maybe somebody that's been married no, the whole it, life? Not to me, because somebody said that to me. OK, because if somebody had said that to me, somebody was like, well, you know, well, I've been divorced twice, you know, so I got some experience. No, what? three times, three times. They've been married three times. That you didn't do it right. Right. Time. right. So because uh, I've had this type before. And so I'm like, well, you can't tell me anything because you can't tell me how to stay married because you weren't able to stay married. Mm-hmm. You can tell me how to get a divorce. Yeah. You can tell me all the things to do or may, what may happen in a marriage that can cause a divorce, mm-hmm. but you can't tell me how to stay married because you weren't able to it, stay yeah. married. It was a but what if it wasn't their fault? Mm. They still wasn't able to stay married because they haven't had the experience of staying married yet. Hmm. Interesting. I, I get that. Yeah, I mean, you know, you, you, I don't care. You could be a school teacher all day and you can have kids. and You've been a teacher for 30 years and never had kids. You can't tell me how to be a parent. Hmm. True that, and I'm an, I, and I'm a I, state, I, 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 I and I never that. forget. One of my daughter's teachers came to me. <laughs> I never forget. She came to me, and she was pregnant. She was getting ready. To, it was like a month before she was going to deliver, and she said to me, "She was like, oh, Charmaine." She said, um, "I think I need to apologize to all of my kids." 
She said, because now that she was getting ready to have a baby, she said, I think I was too mean. She said, I think I was too hard on the kids. Part of her brain but Because up. now she's becoming a mom and she says she don't want anybody treating her kids, her kids like, like that. Ooh, wow. So although she had been a teacher for Ooh, years and they think they know kids, but it's not until you have your own. And I had that conversation with her before then because I always have to have this conversation with, uh, with teachers who don't have kids because they don't get it. And then when they have kids, they get it. They get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, that's and, good. And that's a good point. Right. And then another teacher, um, I was going in my car because you know I'm always friends with all my kids teachers and she she stopped me and she said oh I have to find a preschool because I remember when she had her first son she said I got to find a preschool for my son and she said I'm so nervous I said really I said now you understand why I was asking a bunch of questions and always in your business when it came to my child because you want to make sure you know who's taking care of your kid because that is your most valuable possession she got it you know what I'm Mm. saying yeah and so when she moved and switched school, she called me, let me know where she was. And so my kids went over there where she was. That far. But you know what I mean? So you can work with kids for years. But if you haven't had one, you might feel like you're all motherly. But until you have one, it's something that triggers in your brain. So it's nothing that, that a child psych- psychologist can teach that person. You want the child psychologist to literally have a child to be able to tell you to anything. understand like, that's, that's it, there, there, there's a love there's a connection especially when it comes to a mom and a dad because it's not your clinical home, it's right. spiritual yeah, it's, it's not book go. knowledge yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying yeah. it's something when you've carried a baby for nine months yeah. and you didn't felt that baby yeah. kick and that baby didn't you know what I'm saying it's like a part it, it opens thank up thank you it's a, con- it's a connection that you opens. have with that child that's your most precious yeah. possession so until then wow. and I'm sorry a long time girlfriend can't tell me how to be a wife nope. sure Say nope. that. Okay. You can only tell me how to be a girlfriend. Right, right. I know you feel like y'all married, <laughs> exactly. and it's like we married, but it's something that happens in the spirit when you get married, because the Bible says, and the two becomes one. That so right now, y'all still two people. You've yeah. been together 25, 35, 45 years, mm-hmm. but you're still two people. That's right. Wow. I don't you care how long lying. you lived in the same house. Yeah, it's a spiritual thing. That's why. That's why when a married person gets a divorce, it's a tearing in the spirit because Ooh, now that Jesus. one is now becoming. Two again. That's why a tearing happens in the spirit. There's a separation that happens. So, you know, a long time girlfriend can't tell me how to be no wife. Mm. Let me sit down. Let me sit down and talk to a wife because she has a different perspective. Yes, ma'am. That's right. On that because you, when you make those vows, there's something that's serious when you make those vows. You ain't made those True. vows yet. So, until you make those vows, mm-hmm. then we can talk. And they mm-hmm. serious as hell. Mm-hmm. Oh, anyway, y'all. Thank y'all so much for watching Hot Topics. Yeah. <laughs> no, we are. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Thank, All right. Thank y'all for tuning in to Hot Topics. Be sure to share this page. Also, don't forget to like and follow us on the Lady Charmaine Live page. And don't forget to press the subscribe button because every time we go live, you'll get a notification to let you know that we are live. Yeah. And again, tomorrow I'll be talking to Miss Misha Lay. She's going to be here talking oh, about cool. her TV One Unsung episode, the story of Misha Lay. You're going to hear her talk about all the good old stuff. This is like her fourth time gracing the Lady Charmaine Live show but uh, all right. <laughs> so uh, thank you Michelle but she will be here on tomorrow and then on Monday I'll be talking to actor Omar Epps we're going to be talking about the movie Traffic that's now on DVD plus we're going to be talking about one of his uh, one of his books but we're going to be talking about Traffic so make sure you tune in and make sure you click the subscribe button so you can get the notification when we are live and I want to just say thank you to one of my sponsors Rebuilding Your Dreams After the Storm Women's Conference be sure to go online and get your tickets today all you have to do is go to it is called Rebuilding Your Dreams conference.eventbrite.com and we want to make sure that you get your tickets so if you're looking to rebuild your dream you kind of feel lost you kind of lost your way go to this conference to rebuild your dreams again and again thank you so much to my friends my homies my partners and they go by the name of my husband joe thank you babe for joining me on the show anytime also my girl miss marie hutchison hello and the hair hustler he goes by the name of mr Derek dennis Dennis, and again thank you. you guys so much and i would love to see you all again tune in on tomorrow at 4 p.m. Don't forget to join our Hot Topics pages. Hot Topics, real talk, no chaser. Follow me on all my social media pages. And again, thank you so much for watching the Lady Charmaine Live Show. This has been Hot Topics. Bye.